Hey guys, Pixel Dan here, and today we are going to take a look at the Kotobukiya Art FX 1 7 scale Darth Vader pre painted model kit from Return of the Jedi. Now, I've taken a look at several of these awesome Kotobukiya model kits already in the past, and this one here is probably going to be one of my absolute favorites so far. Now, let's take a look and see exactly what we've got with this pre-painted kit. Now, just like with all of the Kotobukiya stuff, it does come disassembled, uh, but it's a snap-together kit, so it's very easy to put together. Uh, there is no glue or real model skills required in order to put this piece together. Uh, it's very simple. The pieces all fit together very snug, and you know, just in case you need the guidance, you do have a sheet of instructions that shows you exactly how to piece all of the uh, parts on the statue. Uh, it is a softer plastics vinyl type statue, so it's not too heavy, it's not made of resin, uh, it's flexible so you don't have to worry about breakage while you're putting the thing together, so it's very straightforward, very easy to do. So let's take a look and see what's included with the 1 7 scale Darth Vader piece. First of all, like most of the Kotobukiya bases, of course, we do get a nice display base that has the plugs in it for the Darth Vader statue to stand. Now, I'll show you exactly how easy it is to assemble these Kotobukiya statues. Uh, step by step, very easy process. The Darth Vader one here just comes with pretty much just enough pieces to actually put it together. Um, there are a lot of other of the Kotobukiya art effects pieces, such as the Commander Cody, some of the others that we've looked at before that come with alternate arms and such, so you can have different poses. Uh, this particular piece here pretty much has just the one standard pose, but it does have some different display options and some really cool light up effects that we're going to get to in just a bit. So to go ahead and start things off, the statue of course has the plugs on the feet that snap right into the base. Very solid and very firm, so once it's in there, it's locked in good. You don't have to really worry about it toppling over. The base does a great job of holding the whole piece up and together. Now, as I mentioned, this piece is a light up uh, statue, so it does come with this little battery pack which fits inside of the statue in order to do the light up feature. Now this is a really cool little uh, piece of technology actually how this whole thing works uh, because this here actually is where it houses the batteries so if you ever need to change the batteries you can do that just by unscrewing it requires three of the small button cell batteries luckily this does come with the batteries so you don't have to worry about that right up front but then it's got this small little plug on the top so after we slide the battery pack in there, this plug will actually then attach to the torso piece. And as you can see, all the other parts have these little plugs, these little sockets. So they all hook together and that's actually how all the light up function will uh, drain the power from the batteries in order to light up. It's a pretty cool little thing. All right, so we get the battery pack on. We've got the, uh, the uh, bottom part of the cloak. And after you get that on, you can slide on the torso. And as you can see, I mean, this all locks in. It's very simple and it locks in real nice and tight too. See, it's not just loose and sitting on there. It's locked on nice and firm. Then we got the, uh, the arm that fits right into the socket. It also plugs in a little piece on the inside. And then we have our nice big cape, the nice flowing cape for Darth Vader. Uh, as you can see, it's not really that flexible. I mean, it's nice and sturdy. So this is... You know, you don't have to worry about it really warping or anything like that, it doesn't seem. Um, you got two little plugs, fit right into the top shoulder pieces on top, and then you do have little pegs on the bottom to help attach it to the base, which just kind of helps level it out even more, so you don't have uh, to worry about it toppling over or anything like that. So, now we're at the part where you decide exactly how you want to display this piece. The reason I say that is because Darth Vader actually includes two different heads. You've got one that is just your standard head, nothing really special about it, and then you've got the one over here that is your light-up head that goes for the light-up feature. So let's go ahead and start with that just so we can see how all of the light-up functions work on this figure. Um, before we move on, I do want to show you that we it's the kind of the same thing with the heads. You actually have two different lightsaber blades. You've got the lighter colored one, which is meant for the light up feature so that the light goes through a little better. And then you have the darker red one, which is going to be your standard display piece for if you don't want to have the light up feature on, you just want to display them as a regular statue, you can go with that solid red piece. We'll go ahead and put in the light up one first. And as you can see, it just kind of plugs right into the lightsaber right there. Now, before you put the head on, 
at the very top there is a very small little switch right here that when we flip the switch that's going to activate the power so that we can have the light up feature activated and then the head plugs directly into the top and there we have our light up darth vader very very cool now the light works in several different areas first up we got his torso piece the breastplates and the two little compartments on his belt all have little lights on them. So we've got the red and green glowing lights on his costume to mimic the way he looks in the films. Then of course we have the lightsaber. You can see the red LED lights actually glow all the way through the blade. It's very bright. It lights up the entire blade. You can actually see the red light at the end of the lightsaber coming off onto my hand. I mean, it's a very bright light, so it looks really nice. And then, in the head, this is where it's really cool. It's actually kind of flickering, as you notice, because this is to uh, reenact the scene from Return of the Jedi where Vader has lifted the Emperor and he's getting electrocuted with the Force Lightning. Inside this smoky, clear helmet is actually a skull, which is kind of hard to see in the video, but when you look closely at this, you can see the skull inside the head that is flickering with the lights on the inside. It gives you a really, really cool effect. Now, I know you're looking at this and it's obviously not movie accurate. This is not the way Darth Vader was standing. He wasn't holding his lightsaber when he was getting electrocuted like this. But let's just say that this piece is more inspired by what happened in Return of the Jedi than it is actually a scene from the film. Uh, even though this isn't, you know, exactly as Darth Vader appeared in the film while this was happening, you can't deny that this is still a really cool piece. And that is an awesome feature, the light up with the flickering skull. But again, if you don't want to display them this way, say you're a purist in the fact that, you know, hey, that's not the way Darth Vader looked when he was getting electrocuted, no problem. You don't have to use the electrified skull. You can just pop that other piece off. You can take the other Darth Vader head, which does not have any of the electronic plugs on the inside, and you can fit it right to the top in the exact same way that the other one was. And you can still use the light up features. So you can still have the lights on his torso, you can still have the lights on his lightsaber, but now you have a standard Darth Vader head. And again, if you don't want to use any electronics at all, it's as easy as popping off the head, turning the switch. You could put in the darker red lightsaber so that you it just looks a little more solid, a little more colored in. And you've got just a standard Darth Vader statue for display. So there are a few different display options for the figure. The pose stays the same, but you've got those really cool light up elements, or you can just have them as a standard display piece. Now, of course, looking at the sculpt itself, it's typical Kotobukiya. I mean, this thing looks incredible. The details are absolutely amazing on this, from the glossy black of the helmet and the gloves and the boots, to the more flatter back, more like black, like a, a leather-like look to the pants, and then you've got the beautiful flowing cape that just looks like it's in action. It is an amazing piece, and it is a must-have for Darth Vader fans or Star Wars fans fans of Return of the Jedi, anything, any Star Wars fan would love to add an awesome Darth Vader piece like this to their collection. I know that this easily stands out as one of my absolute favorite of the Kotobukiya artifact statues so far. They've released a lot of great things this year, but this is probably my favorite piece. The Darth Vader Artifacts Kotobukiya statue is set for release in September 2011, so should be popping up any time now, guys. Again. This is a great piece to add to your collection, whether you want to light him up or display him just as is, I don't think you'll be disappointed. For more information on Kotobukiya and their products, be sure to check out www.kotous.com and follow them and like them on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Until next time.